In the workshop, a modified Southworth Engines 12-inch boiler feed pump built by Don English, part one. I've known Don English for many years, and when I was a beginner, Don was the man who pointed me in the right direction. In the days when I didn't know how to silver solder, I asked Don, and he told me how to do it. Many years ago, Don started a business called Jubilee Fittings, and now, in his mid-80s, even when Don's not making fittings, he makes things like this, just as a hobby. And this is quite interesting. It's a Southworth 12-inch pump, but this one is mounted horizontally. This pump was originally designed to be built as a vertical pump, so this is quite a deviation from the drawing. So why did Don English do it this way? Well, the answer to that is because he can. The design needed considerable modification to make it work in this position. And then, of course, we have the lubricator. This is one of Don's designs, and it's not really a rotative one. A cam rocks back and forth, and that presses a plunger which pumps the oil. The adjustment of these can be tricky, but once it's adjusted properly, it will work fine. This pump hasn't been run for a while, so the first thing to do is to fill the lubricator, followed by going round and oiling all of the moving parts. Very shortly, I'm going to run this pump, so I've just attached the airline and I'm using a cable tie, which I've just cut off so I don't poke myself in the eye. And here, I'm actually going round all of the moving parts with the oil can. As usual, I'm using my normal lubrication mixture, which comprises of 50% steam oil, 25% machine oil, and 25% rapeseed oil, which is also known as canola oil. As soon as I turn on the air, the pump immediately works. I would expect nothing less. All it's pumping at the moment is air that's in the system. The valve is closed as well, so it's compressing air into the top part of the valve chamber. When I open the valve, you can hear what happens. And when I block up the outlet with my thumb, the air starts to be compressed again and the tone of the engine changes. I need the pump to pump some water, so I think it's time to make some connectors. This pump moves a lot of water and it's capable of feeding a much bigger boiler than I use. So I need to make some pipe adapters, one for the top tap to take a 3 8 by 32 threads per inch pipe union adapter for quarter inch pipe. And the water inlet adapter just needs to be made to take the silicone rubber tubing that I already have. This is the original pipe union fitted to the tap and it's designed to fit 3 8 of an inch pipe. I'm just checking the size using a micrometer. But then I dropped the fitting, but after a bit of witchcraft it reappeared. So now it's time to put something in the chuck, and this is phosphor bronze. It's a good idea to make fittings from phosphor bronze, because they're much stronger than brass. As you can see, this part of the process is speeded up, just to get through it, because it's simple plain turning. If you're a beginner to model engineering, and you have a lathe, and you've been watching my videos, by now you should be able to do this. I've got a nice new sharp tip on the tool and it's cutting beautifully. And in no time at all it's the correct size and it's time to part it off. And here's a close-up of the parting off operation. Before proceeding I'm just making sure that my fitting fits inside the union nut and indeed it does. This is how the water inlet's going to be fitted. So I temporarily fitted it and I'm just scribing a line so I know how far to turn it down because the next part of the operation is to reduce the diameter of this, not forgetting to drill a hole down the middle, because it's not much good as a water inlet pipe if it doesn't have a hole down the middle of it. Once again, I'm using a parting tool as a turning tool, just because it's convenient to use it this way, and I'm turning this down to a suitable diameter to fit into the pipe that I normally use. In this clip, I'm just making some rings around the fitting. This will support the piping. Now it's time to part off the component. As you can see, it's running slightly out of true, but this is not important as long as it fits inside the union nut. All I'm doing here is thinning out the end of the component to suit the existing union that I have in my other hand, just off camera. And once this is done, it's centre drill time. A lot of engineering components follow the same principle. You put them in the chuck, you face across the front, you use a centre drill to start with to make sure the hole's in the right place and follow through with the size of twist drill that you want. 
and for this job the twist drill finish will be sufficient. Once I drilled the hole I took a final very gentle cut across the front to make sure everything is nice and square. It's time to fit the finished component to the water inlet manifold. I'm having to use a slightly larger size of Barco spanner, these nuts are quite big. And using some water as a lubricant, I'm pushing on the piece of silicone rubber and it's a really good fit. So this is okay, this is how it's going to be. In the next episode, I will make the outlet fitting and run the pump so you can see it performing. But that's it for this one, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.